and things like that. So let's go ahead now without further ado. Welcome to a recap of today's Python and Django live coding hangout. Today we've been working on the Jury Life Companionship Care app and uh, give a mention and uh, JR is here and uh, we have um, new tests running on all of our commits and pull requests and the mythologist um, helped us set up a kind of a continuous integration workflow and um, that s runs a series of tests again uh, when you open a pull request you're on um, the main branch on every commit and it has a series of jobs here it's pretty cool it formats our code with eyesore to make sure our imports are in uh, the desired order and with black to make sure that we don't have much lint and we're following cons uh, consistent style and it also runs PyFlake. And give us gives us some statistics there. So the main other changes here were relating to configuration uh, for the project to be compatible with these tools or the tools to sort of be compatible with one another. So thank you, the mythologist. This is a really great start. And uh, as you'll see in just a moment, we ran those tests successfully, passed them all on the pull request I've opened today. The task we were, I was working on during this stream was a smooth invitation flow. Basically, when we have a user, let me just show this flow, basically. Uh, can't show the old one because I'm on, not on that branch, but when you have a profile, somebody you want to um, set up a caring circle or companionship circle around, uh, you start out without any companions aside from yourself. And you want to invite some other people and there's different ways that apps in, um, handle invitations and i kind of took a low hanging fruit and just give the person a code and they can copy that code it's actually a url and send that to whomever via whatever channel you know email or messaging or anything when the person receives that and they click on that link here's the new flow basically um, so I've got an incognito window here. And I'm just an anonymous user, basically. Um, you know, basically, Briley um, knows the person, but they may or may not have any knowledge of companionship care, just that they're being invited here. So let's take the first, or the second case, that, that having no knowledge of companionship care. They probably won't have an account. So they'll need to sign up. In the sign up case, we'll say, Details, whoops, type correctly, super secret password. And when they sign up in our previous session, we enable them to automatically be logged in. In this session, we enabled this argument, this URL query parameter to be passed that will redirect to whatever value is here. So when I click this button, it's actually going to redirect me. If I type my password quickly, I'll show you the code underneath here to this back to this join page. You have to be logged in in order to accept a, um, a request. Otherwise we don't have a user to associate with that companionship request and it won't work. Now here you're prompted. So previously you were prompted to sign up or register. Now that you're registered and it automatically signed you in, you're prompted here to join as a companion. This intermediate step is so that um, you have, a, you know, you're really making sure that's what you want to do. And I might actually put some more information there, or I'm not sure if we want to put who you're joining as, uh, but in any case, right now that's a requirement. So when you click this button, the care coordinator will review that one and they'll see the new sign up. And here's one from previous. You can 
add and remove people that was also done in a previous uh, session. Now let's take the new sign up person and log them out and see if I can go through that flow again. Uh, so notice that we're at this join page and both of these URLs have this next query string. So they behave the same. This is just a default Django login page. And uh, I don't have a user login, but by default, it accepts the next period uh, parameter. So it would have the same exact flow as I just demonstrated. I won't go through all that. Again, just to save a little time so we can take a look at the code. All we did is essentially took our custom signup page and made it behave like the Django login page for the convenience of the user. So let's take a look how it all works, how it came together. This view is pretty heavy, but it's uh, sort of the core. Uh, it's got a cognitive complexity score of 10, which you're supposed to keep it under five according to code climate. I don't know how like that score is calculated specifically, but it's about twice as difficult as it should be to understand. And uh, so apologies for that in advance when we look at that in a moment. When you are redirected to this login or register template though, it's a simple, template that has two buttons and they link to the login and sign up page respectively and they take this argument this next from the request path so it's a easier to follow I'll show it here so when you view this invitation, the view logic is actually gonna notice that you're not logged in. So I'm struggling to demo this. Okay, here it is. Here's the view. It's a view, it's a function based view because it's fairly complex. So the first thing it checks is if you're authenticated. If you're authenticated, it's gonna do a bunch of stuff. We'll go through those a little bit line by line. Otherwise, it's going to return this login and register HTML. So this is just a really basic, again, two buttons, as you see here. And they just get, when you have a, a request, you can access certain properties of that request, and specifically the path here. So that's everything after here. So when we construct these URLs, we're just appending that path to the default accounts, login, accounts, sign up URLs nothing really magic there uh, so that's the case and then when you essentially go to one of those um, so if I click sign up the this is essentially again replicating how the Django login form works if, if the login page notices the next query string property I'm struggling for my words here it'll forward you to that page um, but our signup page didn't do that. So here I have passed this um, argument to the page. And in the view, I'm getting the context data and looking at that get request, seeing if there's a next argument. If it's there, then I'm going to add it to the template context and just returning that con context. In any case, when you're getting context data, you have to return it. So in this sign up form, if that was passed there, I'm going to create a hidden input, with the name next and the value next, just keeping things really simple. This is just wiring. Really all it is is wiring data through out the flow because this is a stateless medium. So I can't kind of have any state. I have to hand it on each step of the way. So here's that hidden input for the next value or next and the values here. That's where I can pass it back. So I get it from the get request, I put it in the template. And when this form is submitted, it'll be submitted via a post. I'm thinking this is be fixed. And it'll include 
possibly this next value. So in the case um, of the submission, this is a create view. So it's signing somebody up. It's creating a user with a custom user creation form. I've covered this in a previous session. We're kind of deep in this project, <laughs> but nonetheless, it's like a, we're in beta mode. So it's going to validate that form, save the new user object, log them in, and then, hey, check it out. Is that next parameter there in the post? Did it come in with the form? If it is, we're going to redirect them to that next. Otherwise, we're just going to redirect to the success URL, which is the sort of default way that this create view works, which is our home page in this case. So all that to say, this is trying to smooth over this flow for the user so they don't get kind of dropped off. They register, you know, they sign, yeah, register and automatic logs in and then they're like, where do I go now? How do I get my invitation back? This takes them right back to that invitation screen as I demonstrated earlier. Now, essentially the invitation screen, I didn't write most of the code here today, but I'll go ahead and review it on stream just so you can kind of see how I'm thinking here. So again, this is now that they're authenticated, they're back at this uh, invitation screen. pops him back to the join his companion screen. Now it notices that they're authenticated and it's displaying this because this person is not already a companion. First, it tries to see, does a person exist with this, uni with this unique identifier basically here? If not, it's gonna give a 404. Then it's gonna check, is this person, this someone new already a companion? If so, it's just gonna send them to the person page. There's no sense in joining as a um, companion twice. Then it's going to check, have they already submitted it? This is a bit tricky. I want to kind of keep people from spamming, but um, yeah, so this essentially doesn't let you render uh, or submit multiple requests. Once you've requested, if you hit this URL again, it just sends this message, you know, that it's received it and that uh, the care coordinator will review your thing. And since I just submitted the form, you know, we're, we've skipped over this, but basically what happened when I submitted the form, it's a post and it creates a join request and saves it and rendered this, renders this same. In fact, I could redirect to self, but it essentially renders the same message. Otherwise it shows those two buttons on the form. In the case that you're not authenticated, <laughs> this is why this has a cognitive complexity of 10. It renders that login register form. So I hope that's not too confusing, but it certainly um, took some figuring out. And it's actually simpler than the first uh, solution I was trying to, the way I was trying to solve it first. I'm not even going to describe what I was trying to do there. So this is actually not too bad of a, a solution. So this is the smooth invitation flow pull request. I'll just link this on GitHub. Uh, link this on the chat, this GitHub pull request. It does have a little bit of a um, remote uh, or a possible security vulnerability, but um, I kind of acknowledged that in the case that we're matching the way the um, default Django login view works. I'm just kind of matching that in our signup view that we we're able to take this next parameter and redirect to it. It's potentially unsecure because it's a user provided value. Makes sense, but at this point, I'm not gonna fight that or kind of worry too much about it. And JR is asking what defines a solution? In my eyes, that's a, uh, <laughs> that's a difficult question, but it's something that solves a problem but it solves it in a way um, that has the most acceptable set of trade-offs. Everything has, every solution has trade-offs. Some, some solutions aren't solutions that, what's the word if it's not, if it doesn't solve the problem, it's not a solution. So that's the first criteria. It's got to like meet the need or, you know, the goal you're aiming at. Our goal was a smoother 
user flow. And there's a set of trade-offs and possible ways of achieving that. And each of them has different complexity or maybe security issues. Like this one has a little bit of a security um, trade-off. Yeah, lines of code, but more importantly, complexity. This one is uh, somewhat complex. Like this join as companion view function was already a little bit complex and now it's even more so. It was probably a cognitive complexity of like eight and now it's 10. But the first solution I was kind of running over in my mind and started to uh, try to code probably would have been a complexity of 15 on that same scale. I don't know how that scale is calculated. So this is actually a simpler solution than I was trying, but has a minor trade-off of the security, whereas the other solution wouldn't have had the security trade-off as much at all, uh, because I was going to put two forms in this view and, and check which form was being submitted and stuff like that. Um, yeah, but at the expense of the, the complexity. So, um, and I probably wouldn't have been able to achieve that in this session. And as well, I wanted to work through all these um, checks and get green light on everybody here. So. Yes, uh, almost two hours, and I'm pretty satisfied with this. So those are, does that kind of um, ring true to you, JR, what a kind of a solution might be? Uh, there might be another criteria for, for a solution that should not come to me. I think it's at least two criteria. It solves the problem, and it has an acceptable set of trade-offs. What else? <laughs> and I thought of it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't matter. That's, that you can be getting stuck though in some conversations of like yeah, people get fixed on their own solution. <laughs> or yeah, so that's another thing that's a trap is don't settle for the first uh, idea you come up with. Give yourself some latitude to explore the solution space or the design space and think about the trade-offs of each each idea. Don't just dive straight in and solve it the first way that comes to mind. It might be a good solution, the first one that comes to mind, but likely there's um, some trade-offs you're not thinking about, and there might be some other solutions with a better set of trade-offs to make. So those trade-offs are key. Complexity is key. key when, like one, you know, how fast you can solve it, it could be an important criteria. And so speed is one of the trade-offs. All right, well, now we're going a bit long. So this has been another Python and Django live code session. JR, thanks for stopping by. It's nice to chat. Let's hopefully see you around the uh, stream again. Ali, also, thanks for stopping by earlier in the, in the chat. I hope you're uh, doing well and thinking about your social media project. All right, and if you're watching this on YouTube, thanks, and uh, give me any comments or suggestions on how you might approach a similar problem or what kind of projects you're interested in building, and I'll try to respond to you as soon as I can. Thanks for your time. Have a great day.